Unexpected synergy can sometimes arise from two seemingly unrelated arenas. In this case, we saw the two arenas as financial services and environmental issues. And we saw that Ant Forest, a CSR project conducted by Ant Financial, has successfully leveraged this creative synergy providing business model. However, as they're facing financial challenges ahead of them, we suggest our two strategies in terms of financial sustainability and platform sustainability for its good project to be long-lived. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is a tremendous honor to stand before you tonight, proudly representing South Korea, we're Team Nyonsei. My name is Suran. Today I'll be joined by my colleagues, Dahyun, Kyuhyun, and Singhyun. So let's begin with the presentation. If we take a look at Ant Financial itself, we see that it has successfully embedded itself in the lives of ordinary people. By, by providing an array of convenient services, ranging from mobile payment service to insurance services. And their market share to date is 53%, being one of the major players in the industry. However, we see that Ant Financial is facing a few challenges. To look at them in two big areas, we see that they're facing a huge competition, especially an intense competition from Tencent's Tenpei. Now, Tencent, as it, as it owns its own uh, WeChat chatting system, it has a greater network effect over its, over its Ant Financial services. Therefore, we can see that its market share, Ant Financial's market share from the year 2014 to 2017 has decreased from 70% to 53%. And we see the second challenge as government regulation. Now, government regulation has hindered an array of different revenue-creating business model of Ant Financial. If we look at the mutual insurance service, it has hindered the post-claiming business model of Ant Financial. And also, they have raised the reserve fund ratio to 100%, further, hin further imposing some challenges for Ant Financial's business. Now here is where their corporate social responsibility project, their Ant Forest, comes into the picture. Ant Forest has been successfully able to link financial services with environmental issues by providing uh, personal carbon footprint quotas, translating them into energy, then planting trees for desertified areas. And we can see this through a simple figure on the slide, 55 million trees were planted by 2018, which is a staggeringly high number compared to the key players in such area. How, uh, we also further see that Ant Forest was able to tackle the issues highlighted in the previous slide, competition by being the first one in this creative synergy creating business model. It has been a pioneer in connecting financial services with, with environmental issues. Therefore, it has a point of differentiation over its competitor, Tencent. And we also see that Ant Forest was able to, to some extent, tackle the issue of government regulation. Through the successful corporate social responsibility project, we see that Ant Financial is able to portray the image of being socially responsible, therefore creating a healthy relationship with the government, putting themselves in a more favorable position in the future, being able to open the floor for negotiations in terms of the government regulation. So now that my teammate, Suran, has stressed the importance of Ant of, that Ant Forest has on Ant Financial, now I would like to go into detail about the challenges that Ant Forest itself faces. The first challenge is that it's not financially sustainable. Ant Financial is currently facing a net loss of $274 million, mainly due to its, its main revenue models being um, restricted by the government regulations and also due to the hard competition. Ant Forest isn't helping in this area as it's not commercialized and it has an implementation cost of almost $72 million in just two years. However, we, um, and also in the matter of platform, Ant, Ant Forest is helping Ant Financial because it's making its users more um, user sticky. However, because it has ga gamification characteristics, uh, the platform has to continue to create more innovative solutions and features in order to engage, continue engaging their users. 
However, even though ant forest faces such challenges, why are these important? Why is ant forest a necessity, and why must they con um, why must they tackle the matter of finance and platform sustainability? Well, first, as we have mentioned. Um, the finance industry uh, in China right now doesn't have a really good reputation. Um, it has faced many negative. Uh, it has faced many negative. Um, uh, the corporations of fintech corporations have had many negative impacts on the on the economy, and as such, um, and financial has continued its CSR to improve its corporate image and to improve the image of the industry itself. And it has been a pioneer in. Um, incorporating the environmental uh, effects into finance with its ant forest. And as it has set the stone for its peers, it has also committed in to long term to continue planting trees and to continue its corporate social responsibility. However, as we've mentioned, the ant forest product hasn't been commercialized and it's having a lot of um, in continuous incurring costs. So we believe that ant forest has to find a way for it to be financially sustainable. And also in matters of platform, as we've mentioned, um, it's helping Ant Financial use, uh, retain its users, and it has also increased the switching cost by creating uh, innovative uh, features. That's why we believe that. That's why we believe we have to rephrase today's question of how can Ant Financial achieve sustainability through Ant Forest? And we're going to answer this problem of sustainability through two main categories, financial sustainability and platform sustainability. And to briefly walk you through the strategies that we're going to propose to you today is we're going to stack, tackle financial sustainability through strategic alliance with governments and strategic alliance with corporations. And the problem of platform sustainability will be tackled by proposing creative innovations such as hanging gardens and college campaigns, which will hopefully help and financial and forest retain its users. Now my teammate Dion has established the importance for Ant Financial to deal with the challenges of financial sustainability and platform sustainability in their innovative CSR project. And as consultants, we believe that in order for Ant Financial to effectively deal with the concerns of financial sustainability, Ant Financial must first create a strategic alliance with governments. This is within the objective of Ant Financial to reduce the high cost of its CSR project by instead sharing the cost with governments. If we first take a look at the status quo of how Ant Financial and Ant Forest works, Ant Forest currently plants trees by cooperating with an environmental organization, SEC Foundation, and plants trees in the inner Mongolian deserts of China. This is one of the reasons why Ant Financial is suffering from the high cost of planting trees. But instead, by establishing a strategic alliance with governments through our strategy, we believe that Ant Financial would be able to share the high cost in planting the trees by instead establishing um, alliances with governments worldwide. Desertification is a major issue for many um, countries worldwide, such as regions in Africa or even the Sahara Desert. And if Ant Forest creates a strategic alliance with these governments worldwide, we believe that Ant Forest would be able to get the funding required for planting the trees and not only receive the funding required for planting the trees, but also solve its issues on the areas of where to plant the trees. We believe that through creating a strategic alliance with international governments worldwide, and um, Financial would not only be able to um, reduce the cost involved in its project, but also expand globally as well. Second, we also believe that and Financial also create a strategic alliance with corporations as well. So in order to understand why we specifically need the strategic alliance with corporations, let's first take a look at how this and forest system works. First, um, if a user uses Alipay for an environmentally friendly activity, such as using public transportations, we may see that the user receives the energy in and forest, and this energy is ultimately used to plant the trees in the regions. This is also one of the reasons why Ant Financial and Ant Forest is suffering from the high cost because Ant Financial is one of the is majorly responsible for all the most cost involved in planting the trees in the region. Um, thus, we suggest that Ant Financial create a strategic alliance with corporations to reduce the cost by sharing the cost with businesses. 
First, we, our team suggests that Ant Financial create a strategic alliance with Gigi, China's leading um, car sharing industry, car sharing business. Um, first, um, Gigi is one of, the, one of China's leading car sharing businesses in China. Yet, the users of Gigi can be divided into two um, various categories. Their ways of paying for their Gigi rides um, varies from using Alipay or even Tenpay by Tencent. Yet, if we create a strategic alliance with Didi and offer such energy points to users of Didi who use Alipay for paying for their rights, we believe that we are, we believe that Ant Financial would not only be able to um, create more users of Ant Forest and Alipay, and um, this will also work because Didi, through our strategic alliance, will also fund the activities for planting the trees in the desert regions. Um, you may wonder why Didi would pay for these. Um, why, why Didi would pay for the funding of planting the trees, yet we believe that CSR is a major project, a major issue for many corporations nowadays, and by creating a strategic alliance with Ant Forest, which is one of the leading CSR projects worldwide in terms of desertification, this would be a good opportunity to, for, uh, for Didi to participate in the corporate socially responsibility project in a most cost efficient way. Thus, we believe that cr by creating such strategic alliances, um, Alipay would be able to, uh, and Financial would be able to share the cost and reduce the cost required for its highly expensive CSR project. And in the end, we believe that such high cost would even be, such, high, such alliances would not only be limited to corporations such as Didi, but even um, corporations such as Starbucks um, by offering them with energy points when they do not use plastic or paper cups. The expected impacts of our strategies as are follows. First, Ant Financial would be able to reduce the high cost involved in their Ant Forest project and even generate more revenue and funding from the alliances with both government and corporation. We may also expect more revenue since there will be more Alipay users through the strategic alliance with corporations. Ant Financial, by creating um, alliances with governments outside of China, may also be able to expand globally outside as well. Thus, through our suggested strategy, we believe that Ant Financial would be able to reduce the expense and commercialize Ant Forest, which is the objective of Ant Forest currently. Now that our first strategy tackles how we can achieve financial sustainability, our next question goes to how can we achieve platform sustainability? And that is, of course, retaining the current users and perhaps even acquiring even more. So we have here strategized two specific action plans in terms of how we can retain the current users and even go further and add more. The first strategy, the first action plan in terms of acquiring and retaining current users is offering a new product. Currently, um, currently our Ant Forest has only one product in terms of the fact that the users can only use their energy to plant trees in the desert. But perhaps, what if they can use these energy points to plant trees in the urban areas, cities as well. In recent days, we're seeing a lot of gardens, hanging gardens in the office buildings as well. And that is an example of using and planting trees in the urban areas as well. And why is this even more effective than we suggest? It's because that trees and plants in the desert are less visible compared to the buildings that we see every day in life. When we commute to our buildings, when we commute to our offices, what if we can see the plants and the gardens that we have created in the buildings? And even more, we can suggest a new feature in, by introducing this hanging garden product because you may as well as collaborate with your office colleagues to create these hanging trees in your respective offices. And now our second action plan, not only targeting the business, um, business officers, but also we want to target the college students. And why are we targeting college students? Let's take care of that first. Because the current college students are considered Generation Z. And, that, and these Generation Z students are more susceptible and more environmentally aware and conscious. Even more, these students actually go back to their local areas, the rural areas where they come from during the Chinese national holidays. And when they do, they influence, um, they use their power as an influencer to convince their relatives and to tell their relatives about the applications they're currently using. And that might bring in even more indirect 
um, acquisition and retention of the users. So how is this going to look like? Well, we believe that we can put many universities into a competitive, um, competitive gaming environment. So therefore, each university will be able to accumulate points in respect to the energy points that the, each respective students have collected. At the end of the campaign, the college with the most po energy points will win this tree of honor, and therefore, we will be able to make sure that a lot of university students and the indirect users that, who will be influenced by these uh, students will also come in and join the end forest and end finance. Now, the clear expected impacts of our second strategies as follows is that we'll be able to entertain and keep our current users, but not only that, we'll, be make, we'll make sure that the current business model of planting trees are even more visible to our current users. It's more visible when you see the plants themselves in your local area, in your urban areas, as opposed to deserts, of course. Now, we must make sure that the financial impacts are not severe. And then we have covered here that the main cost that will be involved in both strategy one and strategy two will not be operating cost, but rather administrative cost in terms of pitching these ideas to the possible strategic alliances, the governments and the, co um, the companies, but also the marketing costs that will be involved in making sure many universities participate into our strategy. And we anticipated about 7 to 20 percent of our revenue generation will be spent for this administrative cost. So what is then our uh, possible revenue projection? That is, we believe that by sharing 50 percent of our current annual expenses in terms of um, end forest, we will be able to save roughly 7.5 million um, US dollars as well annually. And for example, if we take this even further into five year perspective, because the administrative costs are only one time cost in terms of convincing the governments, then we will be even possible to accumulate this positive MPV effect. However, of course, with great strategies, there are risks that follow, and the biggest risk in terms of our current strategy is that there exists a certain amount of consequences and risk when we do not um, succeed in convincing the countries and the governments. So how do we mitigate in terms of disrespect? Well, we can definitely leverage upon our current status in the UN and our current relationship with the Chinese authorities in terms of the Ministry of Environment to make sure that we have a certain leveraging power when we talk to the governments and the corporates. Of course, as the strategist, as your consultants, we want to make sure that we have not foreseen or we, must, we have not foregone any possible alternatives. Of course, you may wonder, why can we just create new source of revenue by creating advertisement panels in your platform? Yes, that is a very possible revenue generation idea, but in the future, when we do know that there are enough users, and enough users and enough companies, businesses involved in our platform and thus retain the certain network effect in your platform. All in all, our strategy timeline is as follows. First, our very urgent need is to convince the governments and the businesses to jump into our business so that we make sure that we can share the cost because cost reduction is very important in terms of sustaining our finances. After we sustain our finances, after we get certain more um, relaxation in our finance uh, constraints, we will be able to then pursue on with our future plans in gaining more users as well. So today we had initiated the presentation by looking at the issues at the higher level that's facing for end financial, competition from Tencent and government regulation that hinders the full exploitation of their business model. Then we saw where the CSR project and forest came into the picture and the two key areas of sustainability that they have to tackle find both in terms of finance and platform in order for the long live of this good project. Thank you very much for listening to our presentation. This will be the end of it. Thank you, Yonsei University, for your presentation. May we now move on to the Q&A session. Judges, please. Good. Thank you very much. George, would like to go first? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you are very courageous in thinking about approaching governments for money. You know, governments everywhere are either broke or <laughs> in deficit. Uh, maybe share with us a bit more about 
you know, why you think that would be feasible? Yeah. Uh, well, one reason we thought that would be feasible is because in countries where desertification is currently a serious problem, they already have government um, yes, funds available for so tackling this problem. And as um, Anne Forrest's uh, project is, was uh, proven to be the most effective among the numerous non uh, profit organizations. We believe that with the funding that it already has, the government would see that it's more effective to give the funds to uh, to collaborate with Ant Forest in tackling the desertification problem. Uh, perhaps to elaborate further on terms of what kind of perspective we see in terms of strategic alliance with the government, we do not uh, seek that the government pay additional expenses in terms of their fighting against desertification, whether they're allocating their current funds to a possibly even more effective strategy in alliance with an uh, individual company. And therefore, it is necessarily a partnership and not, uh, not asking them for additional expenses. Thanks for clarification. Um, you mentioned two uh, solution programs. Uh, one, Hanging uh, Gardens uh, College Campaign. Uh, looking back, if you were to propose one more solution program, what would that be? Okay, thank you for your question. Yes, we have considered a lot of alternatives. And one of the alternatives that we have considered as well is the Green Fund. At the moment, your company uh, has to, is facing certain constraint in terms of investments. Now, the Chinese government is asking your company to increase your reserve rate from 20 to 50 to 100 percent. That essentially means that we need additional source of revenue so that we can invest the money into it. Now, perhaps we can negotiate with the government in terms of possibly asking them to relax 50 percent of the reserve rate for the use in terms of green fund. So we are not asking them to just reduce the re, um, reserve rate, but rather make sure that the 50% goes to green fund. And this would be in alliance or in parallel with the current Chinese government's interest in terms of fighting against desertification. So we thought there is some level of visibility as well. And to add on, uh, if I may, uh, one additional feature that we thought was maybe monetizing the energy itself so that people can directly buy the energy and use it for CSR services. But we deemed that it wasn't a really effective solution because the main point of um, Ant Forest itself is to retain its users and to make sure that it continues using other services of Ant Financial. So we did think about that, but we deemed that the strategies we proposed were more effective in, um, comprehensively. Thank you. Um, one of the other suggestions you had to reduce costs was to enter into strategic alliances with corporations. And you gave two examples, Didi, uh, the, the car um, riding app, and um, Starbucks. Um, why is it that, I have two, two parts of the questions here, why would the likes of Didi and Starbucks wish to engage with Ant when they certainly Starbucks, for example, have their own CSR programs where they're seeking to reduce the number of, of cups being used and they're, they're, they're um, focused on fair trade coffee. And why, so that's part one of the question. Part two of the question is, why would Ant Financial um, wish to dilute the power that it has uh, obtained uh, through this CSR program and share it um, with, with other, other people? Thank you for your insight. If I may answer your first question um, regarding why Starbucks to partner with, we saw that Starbucks is already doing a lot of corporate social responsibility projects, as you have rightfully mentioned, and therefore we see that they're on board with tackling the climate change issues. Therefore, we chose to partner with Starbucks in order to in order to tackle the limited um, limited arena where such individual carbon footprint could be collected. Therefore, whenever a customer goes to Starbucks and orders a cup of coffee, it could be collected as an energy for Ant Financial, therefore benefiting the both of the two countries. Um, regarding your second question to do with... Uh, what, why is it that Ant would wish to dilute um, you know, the marketing um, 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 positivity that it gets from this, this product? It would, you know, hereafter... Uh, have to share uh, any of its marketing name, it would be in strategic alliance with Didi or in strategic alliance with 
you know, however many other corporate um, uh, alliances uh, it, it attracted. Definitely. We certainly do not want to give away the benefits that we have created for ourselves. But perhaps it, it might be easier for you to understand if we um, tell you that DD will not benefit the same amount of, for example, um, corporate social responsibility and reputation from the service. Because at the end of the value chain, when the users use the DD, they will be paying with Alipay in terms of getting the energy points. So although we have DD involved, we have, with, with additional businesses that we add to our strategic alliance, we create a space for our company that is Alipay. So when it's DD, when they pay for the um, fees in terms of driving and ride sharing, they'll pay with Alipay. When you buy a, um, a, a mug of coffee in Starbucks, you pay with Alipay in order to accumulate the energy points. So yes, with additional um, businesses, you're sharing definitely the benefits, but also you're creating even more chances of exposing your business your, as well. To add on to my teammates' thought, we thought that the strategic alliance with the companies that we have suggested, such as um, um, such as Alipay, Starbucks, and Didi, um, we have thought that these strategic alliance would be possible and could be beneficial for all three companies because these three comp uh, these three companies are not necessarily competitors against each other. They are um, companies of different areas. Starbucks, for instance, beverages. Um, Alipay, for instance, in terms of paying and lastly, DD car sharing. So we thought that although all three, through, our, um, through the strategic alliance that we have suggested, all three companies could benefit um, for, all, for everyone because they are not in a competition relationship in the status quo. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. May I ask one more question to, to pick up on, 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 on Dr. Lee's focus uh, on your, your attempts to uh, get more uh, users uh, from, from the student profile by, by having co competitions. Are students the, 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 the target audience here? Um, are these wealthy students um, who are going to be using um, um, the platform, or do you really want to attract their parents? Um, first of all, your question was essentially, are these wealthy students or not? Did I understood it correctly? Not really, uh, <laughs> whether they particularly are wealthy students. But, but is, is, is our students as a profile the users you are looking to attract? In that, let us be perfectly frank, they are not the sector of the population that has the most money to spend. Yes, yes. <laughs> certainly. When we look into, in terms of the um, disposable income, for example, we would want to target 30s and 40s and those who are already in business. However, as we have mentioned, these students will be a yet another channel in terms of convincing and influencing these 30s and 40s and even more relatives connected to um, the students. In China especially, um, these college students, when, during their national um, holidays or breaks, they go back to the rural areas. And when they do that, they, that's the time when they spread the word of mouth, the spread, the applications and interest and so on to their relatives. And these relatives would, of course, include parents and, and the uncles and so on and so on. So certainly that, in that respect, we're not, we are targeting students directly, but we are targeting students because we know they have the potential in terms of indirectly um, targeting many more possible users. Uh, if Thank Sorry, you. if I could add on. We also believe that it, was, it also ties in with our strategy of um, sustainability because these, 20s and these college students are going to be 30s and 40s and they're going to be the people with the most disposable income. So we thought that targeting them right now and making, locking them into and financial services was going to be really if, if, um, effective in the long run as well. Okay. Thank you. Good answer. Thank you. Um, in your strategy to focus on the government and get sort of government to subsidize part of the cost, you actually suggested the idea that you want to actually take this globally. And are you thinking that this cause uh, are, are much better um, served by actually making it a global cause, even for the Chinese consumer? Or are you thinking of a way to actually help and financial to go global with this strategy on the CSR. What is your rationale for actually sort of internationalizing this program? Thank you for your in 
Thank you for your insight. We believe that first the objective of creating a strategic alliance with governments would lead to reduced cost because and financial and financial could ultimately share the high costs that are involved in its CSR projects. But we believe that although the the first objective, the main objective of creating alliances is to reduce cost, we believe that this will also lead to another impact of helping and financial expand globally. Um, and financial in the status quo is mainly focused on China, but by creating a strategic alliance with governments, we believe that and financial would not only be able to gain more funds required for its CSR project, but also um, use it as an opportunity to expand um, globally in the long run. Do you feel that uh, uh, a global appeal would work better with the Chinese population or something that's focused on China alone? that would be, you know, sort of taking care of your, yourself at home first. Thank you for your insight. Uh, the reason why we chose to go global with this strategy is because climate change is affecting the global population. And of course, desertification occurs within China, but also in many other parts of the nation, many other parts of the globe, including the African continent in terms of the Saharan desert. And we saw that because the millennials, they prefer to be connected with the world through social media, we saw that if their influence is able to be expanded out globally, they will be more likely to participate in this initiative. Okay. And Sorry. If I may add on, one possible concern also is that why should we focus in China or should, should we diversify our focus into the global environment? And we say the f latter because for two reasons. First, um, these, uh, these strategies, our second strategy in terms of doing the university um, campaigns and also diversifying the product itself, that already is significant enough to target the current Chinese population as well, we thought. And secondly, by targeting globally, by going globally, this might create even more synergistic effect when we come back to the Chinese soil. Why? Because it is of national pride when your company is considered the world's leading firm when it comes to the um, green, green financial firm. And, and that's going to create even more effect when you go come back to China, but not in China as well, but in terms of the global environment. Let me just one quick follow-up question. Is Dr. Lee emphasized the difficulty of dealing with the government and question whether the government have money. Do you think it's easier to deal with a group of governments altogether? You want to multilateralize the whole thing? I think that is one very realistic uh, problem that we are facing. Could we be allowed a few seconds to discuss the strategy together as a team? Well, um, t thank you for your insight. It's something that we did think about, but we thought we could mitigate the risk of having to deal with multinational governments because, as we mentioned in our presentation, the company currently has good relationships with the UN and other um, organizations that already have incorporated multi, uh, multiple countries. That's why we believe that um, although we could focus on individual governments in the short term, if we go uh, long term and contact the organizations that already have such connections, it would be much easier than Didi doing everything by itself, uh, than uh, Ali Pei doing everything by itself. Thank you. Don't be discouraged by my question. Uh, we should work more with governments around the world, yeah, uh, for the betterment of the world. Uh, I, uh, you mentioned at the beginning uh, about uh, and financial touching the ordinary people. Very helpful. And then you talk about the public image problem faced by fintech companies. Um, well, can you share with us a bit more thoughts about how to deal with this? Like fintech companies, public image not being so good, but why and how can it be improved? <laughs> Thank you for your question. Um, well, we believe that one of the major reasons why fintech companies have such a negative image is partly because of the industry itself, because fintech doesn't, because it's such an innovative industry, it doesn't have a lot of regulations. And because it's your time is up, and unfortunately, we have to stop here. Thank you, Yonsei University, and you may return to the audience.